Hello, and welcome to the EDB Aerospace Flight Test of the DB2 Thunder. The voice you just heard was pilot Dudebald Kerman, and, and he will be the first jet pilot for the EDB. This is the first test of any jets in any EDB mission. And the jets at the back of the DB2 are GE85 turbojets. Uh, they are used on the F5 along with the White Knight from Skilled Composites. And so the idea is that perhaps these jets could be used to loft a rocket to a decent altitude before the rocket lights just like the White Knight does for Spaceship One. But the main goal here is to test the maximum altitude of these jets and that is what the DB2 will do. And so Dubal Kerman is aiming for maximum altitude as he gets clearance to start. And there the two GE85s rev up. 13.1 kilonewtons dry and 22 kilonewtons afterburning. That's 2,900 pounds thrust dry and 5,000 th pounds thrust afterburning maximum. Though uh, afterburning is a little bit hard to assess. A bit of a wiggle there on takeoff, but he seems to have it under control. Landing gear up. And Dude Ball Kerman will now make the turn towards the Pacific as all testing is done over water. One minute into flight, he's at two kilometers, 315 degrees heading, 161 meters per second. He will not break Mach 1 until he's above the cloud layer. Now he's turning to the testing heading of 225 degrees, which is the opposite heading of the runway. Here we see the internal view. The DB2 has improved camera placement as you saw on the landing gear view. So we have the landing gear view and other cameras placed around the aircraft. A little bit of uh, jitters, but it seems to be fairly stable as Dude Ball turns to his intended heading. Now above 6 kilometers in altitude and 222 meters per second in ground speed. The pilot is of course transmitting a constant flow of info about how the aircraft is handling and so far it looks pretty steady. That was per expectations. There was reported to be some instability between Mach 1.15 and Mach 1.33 at altitude. We expect that Dude Ball will simply keep the DB2 under uh, Mach 1.15. This aircraft is barely expected to break the sound barrier. Coming up on three minutes into the flight. After three minutes, the aircraft is at 10.5 kilometers, heading 225, 206 meters per second. We're approaching the level off altitude. And yes, uh, Dubal Kerman is leveling off and will now pass Mach 1. The goal is to sustain Mach 1 throughout the climb and so as he approaches whatever the maximum altitude is it will be a cruising altitude, it will be a stable altitude he will not attempt to simply spike up to a uh, altitude that is not sustainable and of course that's important because the whole goal of this is to see at what altitude these jets can remain level so that they can release their payload whatever that should be
There's the landing gear cam, which is why it's upside down. After four minutes, uh, we're at 12 kilometers. Uh, 289 meters per second approaching Mach 1 here. Should be getting an internal cockpit view as, as Mach 1 approaches. And here we are. And the uh, aircraft is past Mach 1. DB2 is successfully supersonic. And now continuing to altitude. So the key here is that Dubal Kerman will have to gain altitude without allowing the speed to bleed off. And so uh, he will not be pitching up too much. Speed is essential to getting as high as possible, of course. You have to keep the airflow above the wings. You have to keep the airflow around the wings steady uh, to avoid a stall. So far, no severe instability problems. A little bit of uh, control jitteriness, but after that, the aircraft stabilizes just fine. The issue is if after control input, the movements grow increasingly exaggerated instead of stabilizing. And that's what, uh, in designing the craft, uh, they uh, look at the various coefficients and numbers that they pay attention to ensure that the aircraft stabilizes instead of getting ever wilder movements. Looking good so far. Now above 15 kilometers, still above Mach 1. Now above 16 kilometers, 16 kilometers, that's um, 53,000 feet. So about 53,000 feet here. Expectation is that the DB2 will will exceed 20. 20 kilometers or roughly 65,000 feet unlike the rocket powered DB1 which only had four minutes of fuel this DB2 actually has uh, it, it currently has about two hours worth of fuel Though as it gains in altitude, uh, that increases as well. The fuel efficiency increases with altitude. At the surface, it has about half an hour to 45 minutes worth of fuel, but it, that quickly improves as it gains altitude. And uh, based on that, the, the EDB warned us that this could be a very long mission. And uh, of course, uh, Kerbals uh, do not have much, much patience or attention span. And so they were worried that uh, the human audience would also be similarly uh, concerned about that. But uh, yes, uh, so this will be a somewhat longer mission, especially on the return back. So uh, just a warning from the EDB about that. And this is a matter of uh, sort of creeping up on the, on the altitude rather than uh, simply trying to gain it as quick as possible. Okay. We are getting up there though.
right now it's the delicate balancing act of trying to maintain that velocity as uh, Dubal Kerman can barely keep his pitch above the horizon. Here we see approaching 18 kilometers in altitude, still well above uh, supersonic. Looking for 18 kilometers still. And that's 18 kilometers. 58,000 feet. Okay, so pushing on for uh, 20 kilometers. Looks like the aircraft is uh, stable. Uh, the speed is stable. Dude Bald seems to be trying to get as much pitch as he can out of it. Uh, perhaps overdoing it there. Yeah, Dude Bald's getting a little bit impatient here. As expected, the uh, the Kerbals really don't have the kind of patience for jet power. They're so used to climbing at incredible rates that this sort of so slow climb doesn't really suit them. The mass of the DB1 uh, with uh, full fuel is 6.7 tons. Like the uh, sorry, the DB2. Like the DB1, the DB2 uh, has a reserve tank in the back that helps stabilize it, and that uh, wouldn't be used except in emergencies. And again, if the reserve tank is tapped, uh, it has to be kept within very tight pitch ranges. But uh, there's no expectation that that tank will be tapped anytime during this mission, of course. It has more than enough, and you can see from the display in the cockpit that the center tank around the wings is uh, green, full. The rear tank is only kept half full, and that's by design. The aircraft weighs 2.5 tons empty. Its maximum thrust to weight ratio is 1.6, and that's basically right when the tanks are about to run out. Uh, at, at sea level, at takeoff, its thrust weight ratio is 0.6. Oh, there we go, uh, 20 kilometers. And uh, base com confirms that 20 kilometers, uh, more than 65,000 feet. Uh, in fact, uh, approaching 66,000 feet, and Dubal is just trying to milk the the last bit of of altitude out. But uh, no, he can't sustain anything more than that. Okay, now some back and forth between him and base, as uh, he really wants to get higher, of course, as uh, Kerbals do. But uh, I don't think uh, base is going to let him uh, continue any further here as uh, he's already lost a lot of speed. He's trying to regain it and push again. But I think uh, Mission Control is satisfied with the 20 kilometers. Yeah, he's still trying for a higher altitude here. Uh, and that uh, Kurt uh, word from uh, Mission Control should bring him back. Yeah, he's reluctant to come back, but uh, but uh, that was some sort of Kerbal threat there. And uh, so he's powering down and uh, bringing the aircraft around.
Of course, the maneuvering speed of this hasn't been tested, but it looks good. No particular issues. Well, uh, Dudebald seems to have a little bit of trouble handling it, but otherwise, hmm, a little bit jerky, but, um, but otherwise the aircraft itself is stable as it makes its turn uh, well above well above the speed of sound here actually this is possibly in that instability area that we talked about between Mach 1.15 and Mach 1.33 I believe, I believe some of the wiggliness that we see here is that instability Though it's nothing serious. In fact, in terms of the airframe, this this uh, airframe can go to uh, Mach two and beyond if if the engines provided can uh, are capable of that. So no problem there. Dude, Bald Kerman will not overstress this airframe. So he's turning back to 45 degrees, which is the heading of the runway, and not the smoothest uh, turn ever, but gonna have to talk to Dude Bald about uh, the elegant part of the Elegant Design Bureau. But plane sure looks good, though. Okay, powering back up, as uh, no doubt Dubald Kerman wants to get back home as quickly as possible. It's a long flight back though. It took him a while to get to uh, 20 kilometers, and I'm sure the I'm sure the Kerbals are already thinking about uh, strapping rockets to this thing to make it go go up there a little bit faster. Rocket assisted ascent of some kind. That would be very much in their style. I've heard uh, Kerbal's comment that on seeing uh, fighter jets with their rockets, uh, with missiles and such, you know, uh, they uh, comment that it's such a waste to have uh, missiles fire off like that when you could use them to make the jets go faster. And so. I think uh, they have been getting ideas to that effect of uh, actually keeping the rockets and missiles uh, strapped to the vehicle to push its speed even farther. Of course, uh, there can be multiple objections to that plan, but we won't get into those here. They'll have to discover those for themselves. So Dubal Kerman's descent rate looks good. Uh, if we were worried about his impatience, it doesn't look too bad here. He's uh, keeping the descent fairly tame here. He could easily try and push this and uh, descend faster, getting much more ground speed, but that would not be safe in terms of the trajectory and ensuring that he would uh, hit the runway, but it looks like he's good for the runway right now as he descends through the cloud layer. Now below the cloud layer, uh, they, they say that the max design uh, velocity at uh, one atmosphere is 0.9, so so we do not expect him to remain supersonic at uh, lower altitudes. Really, uh, he needed to make sure that he only broke the sound barrier above, above about 8,000 meters. So he'll want to decelerate uh, below that. But uh, maybe we'll see him test that theory. He is a test pilot after all, so he can, uh, he can try it out if he'd like. 
Nice view of passing through the clouds from the onboard camera. Yeah, I, I do think that uh, they would like him to, to slow down a bit here. And he sounds reluctant to do so, but uh, we're, we're getting some of that instability here now. We're seeing some, yeah, we're seeing some of that here, and uh, you can hear him powering down those jets. Uh, yes, that's that's exactly the kind of oscillation that we don't want to see. And it's getting a little bit serious here. It should be fine as long as he can slow down. Uh, he's just trying to line up with the runway, but... And perhaps by turning he'll bleed off some speed here. Seems to be gaining altitude actually a bit. He's still above Mach 1 here, so he probably should be reducing speed even more. But it looks to be gaining more stability as we as we track him. We haven't been getting any reports from him, not much of a talk back and forth between him and Mission Control here. Not entirely sure why that is, but uh, Mission Control would like to like to see if uh, he's he's got things under control in there. Uh, talking a bit fast for me to get what he was saying there, but uh, you can see him about seven kilometers in altitude, still still above Mach one, uh, just barely. He's uh, in the transonic region there, though this aircraft is basically designed to stay transonic for a while. And you saw him use his uh, his air brakes briefly there. So uh, he is taking the need to slow down seriously. And it looks like now the aircraft is a little bit better. TV1 uh, returning home from a successful high altitude flight. Testing the service ceiling of this aircraft, which seems to be around 65. <laughs> Around 65,000 feet, pretty good, about what you'd expect from these jets. So uh, the Kerbals now have fair confidence in uh, these jets to get them to that sort of altitude. Though perhaps uh, better jets might be able to do more for them. Though, of course, if these are good enough for Burt Rutan and Skilled Composites with their White Knight, perhaps they will be good enough for some Kerbal missions. While it might seem slow, this is, of course, the tough part of the mission that we're seeing right now. As, of course, after takeoff, getting to altitude is uh, somewhat trivial, as long as the pilot doesn't do anything completely silly. However, the dynamics of landing uh, sometimes cannot be fully tested in the, in the design process. And so we're a little bit nervous about how this thing will actually land. 
Uh, rated stall speed is around 80 meters per second, which is very high. And uh, so that's that's a little bit of a concern for the landing gear. And uh, you saw how it was pitched up on takeoff. Its landing gear uh, sets it at an angle, and that's ideal for takeoff. But we also saw on takeoff that it wiggled a little bit as it uh, got off the ground. And that's quite a concern because that means that the landing gear might not be stable when we try and uh, get Dude Ball back home. The landing gear, uh, if you saw on that takeoff, also is tilted out slightly, and that is to that's to widen the wheelbase, which was absolutely absolutely required for this uh, plane. Uh, if the wheelbase was any narrower, it would definitely tip over. So uh, this this aircraft should be reasonably resistant to uh, tipping, though that's always been an issue in flight tests with other other aircraft. So coming into Vandenberg Air Force Base, uh, Dubal Kerman seems to be all lined up, uh, making only uh, minor adjustments to his heading here. We're all nervous to get him back. The aircraft, of course, are not very, very expensive. They're a little more than uh, fuel tanks with wings. The engines, perhaps, are a little bit pricey, but uh, on the other hand, these are these are mass-produced, well-worn engines. They can be uh, purchased at a discount, if you will. So, so really we want our Kerbal back. Okay, Dude Ball should be all set here. He's still going at extraordinary speeds for this altitude. He's uh, going at uh, over 200 meters per second, more than 400 miles an hour. I'm sure that will draw some comment from Mission Control soon, as, as they're a little bit worried that the aircraft is a little bit fast. But if uh, we learned anything from the DB-1 landing, it's that uh, uh, yes, uh, it was noted. Yeah, Mission Control just noted that uh, he seems to be increasing in speed, and they don't like that. Uh, but he's still going at it. Uh, as I was about to say, if we learn anything from the DB-1 landing, it's that the landing gear produces quite a bit of drag. And we expect it to do the same here, but uh, uh, we just saw Dude Bald uh, flash his uh, air brakes just a bit there, so he seems to be taking the speed issue seriously. On final approach to Vandenberg Air Force Base, still going very fast. Okay, mission control holding its breath here for the most part. First flight of a jet in the EDB. It's hard to uh, overestimate how suspicious the Kerbals are about jet engines and the fact that they breathe air and all of this. Not their usual thing. I 
All right, gear down. 1.5 kilometers in altitude, 177 meters per second in speed. Ground speed, that is. Right now, a mission control giving an earful. And, uh, and the landing gear has produced quite a bit of drag. 1.4 kilometers altitude, 133 meters per second. Feet dry, 700 meters in altitude, 137 meters per second. That's over 250 miles an hour. 400 meters, 133 meters per second. Oh, uh, he's overcompensated for descent. Uh, he's got too much lift too soon there. 100 meters, 120 meters per second. Touchdown, 87 meters per second. He's got a bit of a wobbly problem here. He's got a bit of problem. Oh no, the Kraken! Oh dear. It seems as if Dubald Kerman has in fact been swallowed by the Kraken, as the, as the Kerbals would say. An unexplained softness in the terrain there. And uh, we, we can't really provide any more commentary right now. We'll have to investigate this. Uh, this, uh, the loss of Dudebald Kerman on landing here. Only the second flight for the EDB has uh, been met with tragedy, and uh, you'll have to excuse us as uh, we go to investigate this matter.